For today's Monday makeup lesson, I'm going to go into a lot more detail than I usually do. So I hope that you guys enjoy this and let's get started. Prepping the canvas. So I like to start off by creating a little bit more framework and creating a clear canvas for me to work on. And this helps me see the end result just that little bit clearer with every step that I do, but it also creates a framework for me to work off. So I can see the shapes that I'm trying to create. So you wanna start off from this point rather than this one. So how do you do that? So I start off by applying my moisturizer all over my face, including around the eye area. I apply a very sheer amount of concealer or foundation around the eye area and the eyebrows. Now I only apply a sheer amount because if I need to, I can always just cleanse this away, but a sheer amount creates a blank canvas for me to work off. And I also fill in my brows. Now brows are really personal, so I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but what I like to do is just darken from the center out, making sure that this is nice and deep and filled in. And then just on the inside of the brows, I use whatever's left over in the brush to create some fine little hairs. And now we can see our eye shape just that little bit clearer, our brows are filled in, and we're ready to apply our eyeshadow. You might be wondering why I don't just do my entire face. Well, it's kind of personal preference. For me, I find I get enough framework from just filling in my brows, and I can really see the shape that I'm creating by applying a small amount of concealer just around the eyes, which I can then clean up if I have any liner mistakes or fallout, and it's not gonna mess up an entire beautiful face of makeup, but it is personal preference. Preparing the eyelids. So why do you need to prep the eyelids? Surely eyeshadow that's designed for the eyes should just be able to go onto the lids. Well, the eyelids are actually really thin and delicate and sheer, and makeup doesn't hold on to thin, delicate areas of skin compared to other areas of the face or body. That's why when you swatch something on say your wrist or your fingertips, it looks a lot more vibrant compared to when it's applied onto the lids. The eyeshadows need something to hold on to. So there's three different things that you can try. Concealer, this is great because you probably already have a concealer and you can just apply this onto the lids. Primer, which is designed for the actual lids itself and will really hold on to eyeshadow. And cream eyeshadows, these are a cream form of an eyeshadow and they really create a nice base for the rest of your shadows to sit on top of. My personal preference is to mix concealer with my primer. So I use it at about a two to one ratio because my eyelids are kind of dry. Eyeshadow primers can be quite drying on the lids, and if you already have dry skin, it creates unwanted texture. So shearing it off with a little bit of concealer will create a nice base. And this is something that I do for mature skin as well. However, you wanna mix it up to make sure it works for you. For the oilier lids or people that find their eyeshadows just does not stick and stay on, you might wanna use more eyeshadow primer than concealer. Once you apply the primer or concealer, you might find it's kind of damp and sticky before it sets that's actually totally normal. And this can actually help in your application. The sticky damp base will grab hold of the powder like nothing else. So if you're doing a smoky eye or a very colorful look, a sticky base will really help you. However, it does make blending a little bit more difficult. So for beginners, I would actually recommend applying a sheer amount of a neutral eyeshadow over the base to make sure it's a soft powdery effect. Don't worry, your shadows will still hold on to this base. It'll just make the blending process so much easier. Parts of the eye. So the main part of the eye is clearly the lid, and this can be separated into three or four different sections. And then you have your crease. This is where your lid creases into your eye shape. And then you have your brow bone. This is not technically the brow bone because the brow bone is lower than this, but it actually refers to the little area just underneath your brows. Your crease area is probably the most important. A lot of people refer to the crease as just this one line. It's actually not. The best way to think about it is any area above this point, but stopping underneath the brow bone or the little area underneath the brows. And when you're blending, you really just want to stay within these points. Now, this looks really complicated. I promise you it's not. When you're applying eyeshadows, you want to keep them within these imaginary points. Using the edge of the nose, edge of the eye, and the edge of the brow, you create an imaginary line. This is the stopping point for most blending. And then for that inner part of the eye, you basically wanna create a parallel line that stops beyond the tear duct. 
This is all about keeping your blend within these two points. Picking eyeshadows. So how many eyeshadows do you actually need to create an eye makeup look? Well, for any basic look, you only need three things. A light, a medium, and a dark. So your light color is at least one shade lighter than your skin tone, but can be like four or five or six shades lighter. Depends on the look that you're creating. Then you have your darker shade, which should be at least one shade darker, but can be anywhere up to four or five or six shades darker. And then you have your medium shade. So this is somewhere in between your light and your dark. It's almost as if you mix your light and dark together, then you get your medium shade. And it doesn't have to just be with neutrals. This also works with, say, colors like purple. We have a light purple, a dark purple, and a medium purple. However, the medium shade can actually be swapped out for more of a neutral color. So this color here is still in between these, but it's just a little bit more muted and neutral because it's a light pink instead of a purple. And these shadows are often referred to as the highlight, the midtone or transition shade, and the contour. So the highlight shade is basically what it is. It's a highlight, so it's a light. You also have your contour, which we all know is for deepening and darkening something, so that's your dark. And then you have your midtone, or as a lot of YouTubers refer to this as a transition shade. Personally, I feel like that's a good term to use, but I like to use midtone because I feel like it's a better explanation of exactly what this transition shade is. It's a middle tone. It's in between our light and our dark. But you will hear a lot of people refer to this as a transition shade. Makeup brushes. There's really only a few makeup brushes that you need. The most important being a good blending brush. This is gonna create that soft blended appearance. A small brush, something like a pencil brush, or anything that's nice and small that you can do some detailed work with. This is actually my favorite one for beginners, the Blank Canvas E01. Highly recommend it because it really applies the shadow while keeping it nice and soft and blended at the same time. So it does a lot of the work for you. And then you have a flat brush. It's not essential to use a flat brush. You can use your fingertips, a Q-tip. However, you will get more precision from a flat brush. And then you have a clean blending brush. This is an extra one that I would actually recommend for beginners. This will create that soft blended appearance and stop your shadows from getting muddy. Have you ever gone back in with your blending brush after you've used it to apply an eyeshadow and then everything just kind of blurs together? Well, using a clean blending brush will soften out any harsh lines without disturbing the makeup that you've already applied. Framing the lid, applying your midtone. So we're gonna start off with our midtone. Finding your midtone is actually really important, but I do have a little bit of a trick. Use your favorite nude lipstick as a guide. So if you're creating a makeup look and you know that you're going to use a pink nude, try using that in an eyeshadow form as your transition shade. Nine times out of ten, it will definitely work. Now to apply this, I'm going to be using my blending brush. I like to make sure this is soft and blended, so that's why we're using this type of brush. We're going to start by applying this on the outer edge to start with, and then blending it over and back. Wherever you place the brush first is where you will get the concentration of color. So when we're applying dark shadows, we want to start on the outer edge and then blend over and back. Anytime we pick up some shadow, we start on the outer edge again. And then you can sweep this over and back in what's referred to as a windscreen wiper motion. But really it's just moving the brush over and back using the shape of your eye as your guide. Blending upwards towards the brow bone. By the time it gets the brow bone, it should be nice and sheer, with the concentration of the color being in the crease area. Just make sure it's nice and soft and blended. That's the most important thing with a midtone. Also, keep an eye on your blending. Make sure that you are staying in between these two parallel imaginary lines. Adding depth. Taking our contour shade or our dark shade, we're going to apply this with a small brush. Whenever I'm applying dark shadows, I like to use something that I have most control over. And the smaller the brush, the more control you're gonna have. So taking that dark shadow, we're gonna apply this on the outer edge of the eye. And I want you to basically stamp this and press this on the outer third of the lid. Really making sure to get right by those lashes and then slightly into the crease. Now, when I say to get deep in the crease, I mean nice and low. So we're applying the shadow in this sort of moon shape. Once we've done it in this area, we can use whatever's left over in the brush to softly blend this out. 
but your midtone is always higher than your contour. Always. So make sure you keep this nice dark shadow lower than this line here. Then you want to take your blending brush and you're going to soften this out. Now I'm not using my clean blending brush this time because the clean blending brush isn't needed. We have a little bit of mid-tone on this brush and this will soften out our contour for us. When you're blending any of your darker eyeshadows, if you don't want them to go up too high, you want to keep your hand high. So the higher your hand, the lower the blend's going to be. It should be coming slightly straighter on to the actual eye shape. And then I'm going to softly blend this over and back. And this will prevent those bristles from going up too high and blending up past the midtone. Keeping that nice dark shadow lower than this imaginary line. And when you're blending, you're barely touching the skin. It's all about letting the bristles off the brush do all the work. But remember your blending points, keeping your shadows in between these two imaginary points. Faking a pro finish. So now we are going to take our clean blending brush, the one that we have not used for anything else, and we're going to apply our fade shade. What's a fade shade? It's actually a shadow that I kind of invented. It's similar to your midtone, but usually is a slightly different tone, maybe a little bit more vibrant. And I often use the blush that I'm going to apply. The reason I use this is because it really softens out any harsh lines. With a fade shade, you barely want to pick up any product on the brush. It should be soft and blended. And that's why using a blush versus an eyeshadow is better for this. You never want your fade shade to be seen. It's an imaginary, invisible thing that just creates a soft, blended appearance. And you want to very softly sweep this where the hood of the eye or the meeting point of the brow and the crease is. And this will just soften out everything that we've applied and give us a blurry effect. Sharpening the brows. So now we're going to take our highlight shade, which is about one shade lighter than our skin tone. And we're going to use our flat brush to press this underneath the brow bone. This will create a sharper definition between the light and the darks that you've already applied, while also sharpening up the brow shape. Cutting the crease. What is cutting the crease? And why do you do it? And how do you do it? Basically, it's just redefining the lid to crease area. The most basic reason you'd reapply concealer is just to give us a nice clean base for everything that we're going to apply, particularly if you're applying highlighting shades. It also creates a sharper contrast between the light and the dark, meaning that your contour is going to look deeper and darker. So we take a little bit of concealer onto our flat brush and you basically just want to coat the inner lid. Now I'm doing a half cut crease. So I'm going to start on that inner corner of the lid only and then softly sweep this to about the halfway point of the lid. Making sure to go right up towards the crease, but before it hits the crease, bring it down. So this concealer should only be placed on the lid. Once that's on there, I then take my ring finger and I just tap around the edges. So right where the concealer meets the shadow on the outer edge. This will just remove any excess, so it's not going to be too damp when we apply the shadows over the top. So taking our flat brush again, and I've just wiped off that flat brush on a dry tissue, I'm going to take my highlighter shade and apply this over the concealed area, and this will set it in place and give us a nice sharp base to work on. Catching the light. Taking that flat brush again, we are now going to take a highlighter. So this is different from the highlight. This is a highlighter. So it's similar to the highlight, but it has like a pearl or a shimmering finish. So what this does is it just catches the light. And the main areas I like to focus on are just the inner corner and slightly underneath the brows. But you can also tap this across everything that we've applied, just making sure not to get it in the crease. Faking a pro finish. So now we have a difference between our light and our dark. And we want to create that nice pro finish. So we're going to take our fade shade again, and our fade shade, remember, is similar to the mid-tone, maybe a little bit more vibrant, a slightly different tone, 
and just apply a small amount of the fade shade right where the light and the dark meet in the center of the lid. And instantly, we get a much better blend between the light and the dark. This is how you fake that pro finish. Shaping around the eyes. For the next step, we're gonna take that flat brush. I'm gonna take my contour shade and I'm going to apply this underneath the lashes on the lower part of the eye. And this will create more definition. And I usually stick it to the outer two thirds of the eye when I'm applying the darker shade. And you're basically just running this along the edge of the eye. With our mid-tone then, I'm using the same brush and I'm gonna softly sweep this all the way into the inner corner. This will create a softer blend for our contour while also creating some more definition. And then to finish, you wanna take your clean blending brush. This may have a little bit of fade shade on it, but that's totally fine. And you just wanna blend around everything that you've already applied with a very, very light hand. And then our eyeshadows are on. Brightening the eyes. For the next step, I'm gonna take a pencil liner. Now, when you're picking a pencil liner, a lot of people instantly think of white liner. It's actually not a good idea to use white eyeliner unless you have extremely pale skin. You want to choose a pencil that works with your own skin tone. So it can be a little bit brighter, but it doesn't necessarily have to be white. So I'm going to use this shade here because it blends in perfectly with my skin tone. And I'm just applying this on the inner rim of the eye. So you see that little area of skin that's just inside? You basically just want to run the pencil along that. And this will create a brighter appearance and also make your eyes look a little bit bigger too. Sharper Pro Finish. We're now gonna take liner, and don't worry, because we're only going to be using this to create an invisible line. So I'm using a felt tip eyeliner because I feel like they're the best and easiest to use. I'm gonna take my pinky and rest this on my cheek, and then run this liner along the lash line. You shouldn't be able to see this liner. It's invisible, it's super thin, it's really close to those lashes and it's almost sheer. So don't over apply this. Keep it nice and low and aim as if you were trying to coat the roots of your lashes rather than your actual lid. And you can see the difference that it makes. It's a very tiny line that makes our eyes look a little bit more bigger, brighter and more defined. And this will also create the illusion of thicker lashes as well and create that little pro finish. Finish off with mascara and the rest of your makeup. If you need to, you may have to clean up underneath your eyes, but that's okay. And there you go. That is the finished look. If you do have any questions, definitely let me know in the comment section. I will try to answer as many as I can. Hit that subscribe button and check out the other videos on the screen and I'll see you in the next one.